Hello, hello! Today we're gonna make a Christmas card like this one. Let's see what we'll need. We'll need a piece of cardboard for our card and some scraps to stamp our focal image and our quote. Then we'll need some stamps with a focal image. I chose this hedgehog because I really like them and a background stamp. I chose this wood grain stamp. This is optional. You can put another little quote inside on the um, on the inner side. And of course we'll need some ink pads. In my case I chose red, green and brown and black to stamp either dye ink or archival ink and then if your image is intricate you will need a cutting mat and a scalpel or exacto knife however you want to call it or if it's more easy simple one you can get away just with scissors you'll also need a water brush or a normal brush and some water to paint your image and a very useful thing is masking tape and of course glue to glue everything together. It could be stick glue or PVA or whatever glue you use. For stamping we will also need either a stamping platform or some acrylic blocks. Of course whenever you use stamps it's good to have a stamp cleaning pad and in case you're wondering how to make one you can look at my video. One more thing it's nice to have something to color the edges. It could be a bot thingy or a homemade with a sponge in a bottle cap. So let's first start with our background. I have my stamping platform here. I'm gonna put my background stamp on and I'm gonna stamp it into the card. I'll position my card so that it's flush and I'll just temporarily hold it with magnets so that I can put some masking tape to get clean edges. If you want you can help yourself with the measurements on the board or you can just eyeball it. I'm moving away the magnets and now I'm gonna position the stamps where I like it. For the background it doesn't matter what kind of ink it is, so I can use this uh, Distress ink if I want to, because it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit blurry. Sometimes it's even nicer, because backgrounds are usually a little bit blurry. What I'm using now are Distress ink in Vintage Photo and in Walnut Stain. And I'll put some rich cocoa memento dye ink as well, just to get some variation. I prefer my background to be a bit more varied. Press well and firmly. I like to clean my stamps immediately, because it's much easier to do that while they're still wet. Now remove the masking tape carefully. And I'll use heat gun for that. If you want you can color the background a little bit just to tone it and we could also do that while the masking tape was still on. This masking tape was pretty nasty that's why I prefer to remove it as soon as possible. Depending on what kind of background stamp you have you can leave it alone without the coloring but for this one I think it's nice to have some color in the background as well. If you will put a lot of water like I am now, uh, it's good to put it to dry underneath a heavy book or something like that. So that the card will lie flat. And it can dry perfectly while we're making our focal images. Now I'll put it underneath the book so it will dry flat. Now let's make a focal image. 
I'm just putting an old mouse pad and a scrap piece of paper on to my surface so that it would stamp better. I'm stamping this in archival ink because I want it to be waterproof. I'm cleaning my stamps as I go. That's much easier. This stamp also has this part. Now because I want this hedgehog to hold this as a balloon I need to stamp another set of this and I will need one more part of this loop I'm tamping, tapping my ink pads onto an acrylic block so I'll be able to color it with them now on to the coloring. I have my ink pads tapped on this acrylic block and I can color with this. This is not a good watercolor cardstock. This is just a piece of office cardboard that was printed the wrong way. And I just like to use this kind of scraps because otherwise they would just go into the landfill and like this they can make somebody happy first but the downside of course is that this is not the most blendable cardstock and you have to work with it a little bit quicker and sometimes you have to wet it first so that you can get uh, some smooth transitions but all in all you know it's just a card it's not a work of art that would hang in a museum, so don't stress too much about it. I like to use different shades of brown, and even if you had just one ink pad, you can still make it lighter or darker, so that it's more interesting. Don't worry if you go overboard, because we will cut these hedgehogs apart, so that really doesn't matter. Nobody will see. Don't forget to color the loops, also the additional loops. But as I said, you don't need to worry about going overboard there. If you want, you can color this snout red. And to make this in grey part I like to mix red and green together until I get some kind of grey that I like. I like this shade. This goes really quickly. And in the end I'm just tapping to, to put some interest into the hedgehogs spines. If you use a few colors and mix them everything will match so it's really easy and if you're not sure which colors would sit nicely together you can always choose something that designers have already put together in a set. Those colors always match very nicely. I like to <laughs> match my own because you know, color is kind of my playground. You can also put some shading if you like to, depending on what style you like. I'm not a big fan of flat colors, so I prefer to make some shadings. And actually, I saw that I prefer this kind of bubble, so I'll make another one. I'll 
quickly dry this. Now as I'm looking at it, I would like to add some more shading to the bu bubble. And this one will be turned upside down, so I'm going to add the shading to this part. And some more inches to the fur coat. I'm just tapping, nothing special, no rhyme or reason. And as you can see, you can have a pretty fat paintbrush and still do it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more fun ideas. If you want to learn more about cards, like which countries love sending Christmas cards the most, head over to my blog. Link is in the description. Now that everything is dry, I'll just cut it out. If you have these shears, take care that you're cutting on one edge, the edge is more serrated and on the other edge it's clean. So take care. These stamps don't have a clean line everywhere. Like here it's broken and I'm just making it up whenever there is no line to guide me. This particular stamp has some parts that need to be cut out with a scalpel or exacto knife. It's usually easiest if you're pulling your exacto knife towards you. So just reposition your stamp so that you're always pulling. And repeat with the second one. Now we've got everything cut out and we just want to put everything together and maybe add a quote. One of these loops will be, will be hanging from his paw and the other one I will cut in half to make a string that holds the bubble balloon. But first let's make a quote. I'll just use one. To make nice corners you can use a corner round, rounder or you could just cut them by hand. This card stock frays like crazy so I'm just smoothing it out before I, I will ink it. Take my ink pad, put some ink onto a sponge and then just ink the edges that will make the quote stand up. Now let's assemble everything. I like this one a little bit off the edge. Another thing you could do is run your ink brush along the edges so that the white of these edges won't stand out. And then let's glue it. Same with this one. You can put also more shading beneath. Choose which one is nicer. Now we'll cut this loop. So that we'll get a piece of hanging thread. Just glue this on. Just position it so it makes sense. Now 
Now the quote. You can put it like this or I can put it crooked, however you like it. And the very last thing to do, I'll just put a stamp that this is handmade inside. And that's it. I hope you like it and I hope you make some.